TSN. Land Rover presents TSN Sunday. With John Wells. Good morning. I hope it's a great day wherever you're looking in this TSN Sunday. The Formula One championship came down to the final race of the season. So we thought it would be a good idea to get a head start on that story this morning. It is our top focus. Vic Ryder and Jerry Donaldson will join me shortly. And we're off to Miami, too. There will be a seventh game in this less-than-classic World Series showdown between the Marlins and the Indians. Stephen Brunt joins us from South Florida. Our feature story this week deals with a Canadian star in world figure skating. The new season got underway this week with Skate America, the first major international competition. And our focus this morning is on Canada's Sandra Bezik, who has a golden touch. So I don't think that this is like a real spin. It's just, a, you know, sort of a pass through. I trust her explicitly. Mm -hmm. Like you just kind of throw yourself we wide are, open <laughs> and, and, uh, and away we go. Uh, and so you, ha you have to have an immense amount of trust and confidence in a person to do that and believe that where she's going to take you is, is a good place. Also on today's menu, a look at the prospects for hockey success in Carolina, home of the Hurricanes. And on Olympic Journey, the Canadian women who will debut their game in Nagano. It's all part of today's TSN Sunday. Well, the Formula One season came down to a dramatic conclusion early this morning in Spain. The European Grand Prix was a winner-take-all race for the World Driving Championship. Jacques Villeneuve and Michael Schumacher lined up side-by-side side with only one objective in mind. Beat the other guy. Schumacher got the early upper hand. A great start by the German. Schumacher jumps into the lead. From Schumacher's perspective, Villeneuve, who never has strong starts, drops to third behind teammate Heinz Harold Franson. Franson moves aside. Villeneuve is then second behind Schumacher, and it's a 1-2 race to the finish, apparently. Villeneuve is right behind Schumacher less than a second until they split up passing Noberto Fontana. Schumacher goes through. Villeneuve pits one lap after Schumacher. He is second faster in the pits, but gets caught behind David Coulthard coming out. Villeneuve manages to get right back behind him on lap 48. Villeneuve and Schumacher collide. Schumacher out of the race. His tires spinning in the dirt. Schumacher stuck in the sand. And again, from Schumacher's point of view, Villeneuve gets the inside. Schumacher turns into him and is knocked out of the race. So Schumacher's dream of winning his third driver's title in four years is over. All Villeneuve has to do is finish in the top six to win the title. But his radiator was hit in the accident, and that was a problem. On the last lap, Mika Hakkinen passes Villeneuve for the victory. Villeneuve does hang on to finish third behind Hakkinen and Coulthard. And third is good enough for the World Driving Championship for Canada's Jacques Villeneuve. After the race, Villeneuve compared this victory to his kart championship a couple of years ago. Uh, today feels great. Uh, in IndyCar, I had led uh, the season most of the way, and it was just a question of keeping that lead. And here, most of the season, we fought back uh, until until uh, the race before Suzuka, where we finally got the lead back uh, when it didn't look like we were going to get the lead back. Then we lost it again, and we came here one point behind. The pressure was high. Uh, we had to fight back. We're the, we were the underdog, basically, and uh, that's always been the best position uh, for us to fight from. Well, Vic Ryder, Ryder is here to join me this morning, and uh, we've also got Jerry Donaldson on the line from Spain. A very uh, exciting day for Canadian race fans, no question about that. Well, it, it was a great weekend and a wonderful way to finish what I think has been at times a controversial and less than exciting season as he picks up his eighth win. But yesterday, uh, Jerry, the qualifying really set it up with the three cars uh, all clocking the same time between Villeneuve, Schumacher, and uh, Frenson. So we had that going in. Uh, Jerry, let's bring you in from Spain. First obvious question seems to be is what happened to Villeneuve uh, on the start of this race? Was it a mental mistake? 
Well, he made another poor start, John. He's, he's famous for that, or infamous for it, I suppose. He said he was amazed at how quickly Michael Schumacher got away. Uh, Michael had fresh tires on. That might have had something to do with it. But uh, anyway, it, it, what it made is, is for the entertaining race that we saw, because Jack had no option but to somehow get by Schumacher, and he did that. And he did it the way he thought he would have to, which is in a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle with some wheel banging, uh, because Jack was prepared for Michael Schumacher to try to take him out of the race. Now, how did you two gentlemen, starting with Vic first here, Jerry, view that incident on lap 48? I think he uh, deliberately turned in. I mean, you see him hesitate, and then you actually do see him make the right-hand move and put his right front wheel into his side pod, and that damaged the radiator. So now, listen, he knows. He did it, you know, in 94 uh, with Damon Hill taking both cars out. He was leading by a point. He won the championship. He knows if he takes him out here. And I think, Jerry, could it have been? Do you think that, in fact, uh, maybe Schumacher did have something wrong with his car, too, at that point? I'm not sure, Vic. Uh, no question about his intentions, though. Uh, it, it could be put down to, you might say, a clash of wills. Neither guy was going to give away. But as you said, Michael does have a history of finishing races, in fact, winning championships uh, by putting his opponent out of the race. He did it also, not only in Australia in 1994, but in a uh, German Formula 3 championship. He put out uh, Heintel Frenzen, in fact. And he also did it in the Macau Formula 3 race one year, uh, pushing uh, Mika Hakkinen out to win the race there. So uh, Michael is a brilliant driver. He doesn't need to do that. In fact, you might even say, if you're charitable to him, that that's part of his <laughs> repertoire is aggressive driving, but in, in this occasion he made, met up with an equally aggressive driver named Jacques Villeneuve. Now Jacques Villeneuve comes away with the World Drivers Championship. This uh, competition though uh, between these two gentlemen came down uh, to one with a lot of animosity between these guys. Do they hate each other? Well, I don't know if they so much hate each other, Jerry. I think they, uh, they have a mutual respect. I think it came down to more the the consistency we had mentioned earlier in our pre-race show, you know, you had Schumacher picking up points in 13 of the previous 16 races. Villeneuve was one point behind by virtue of seven wins. Um, I don't know, Jerry, this, who is, in fact, as John was asking me, did the right guy win, taking off the Maple Leaf? I think the man who had more wins should, in fact, be your world champion. Yes, I think so. Shaq deserved his, his championship. Uh, and the other thing about him, of course, is he made the drama uh, this year. He was the exciting guy. Even when he made mistakes and had bad weekends, as he calls them, um, it was always entertaining. Uh, and a lot of Schumacher's points were scored when Jacques failed to score, uh, not, taking nothing away from Michael because he is a brilliant driver. Even Jacques will admit that he's, he's the best driver in Formula 1. At least he was until today, <laughs> until... Uh, Jacques Villeneuve relieved him of that uh, uh, title, I think, by becoming world champion. He shows he's at least equal to Schumacher. And, uh, yeah, I, I think we've got a deserving world champion. All right, Jerry, thanks very much for uh, sticking around and doing a little overtime over there today. Uh, we waved the Canadian flag a little bit because, sure. uh, obviously, it was a wonderful race and a, and a terrific result for Jacques Villeneuve. Indeed, and I think I said to Jerry earlier about the fact that I think this will do a lot for racing in this country. Sometimes auto racing... Uh, doesn't get the respect it deserves, but we have tremendous talent at other levels as well, at cu levels coming up, and I think this will do a lot for that. All right, Vic, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. A final racing note, Canadian Patrick Carpentier named Rookie of the Year at the Card Awards uh, ceremonies last night in Los Angeles. Next up, we'll get to the World Series and hook up with Stephen Brunt in Miami. Land Rover presents TSN Sunday. Land Rover, makers of the Range Rover, the Discovery, and the Defender. Hockey highlights a little later on TSN Sunday. A quick look at some Saturday scores. Penguins rally for a 3-2 three three overtime win over the Canucks. Maple Leafs won their first home game of the season. Matt Sundin leading the way with three points and a 3-2 win over Calgary. And the Canadians beat the Senators 4-2 at the Corral Center. It was Ottawa's first loss on home ice this season. More in a moment on TSN Sunday.
sub is the Canadian sandwich store that really knows quality. These buns are fresh, eh? I baked them this morning. You're going to love this sandwich. Sometimes we're so Canadian, it's almost embarrassing. Thank you. Thank you? No, thank you. And right now, try Mr. Sub's new California-style wraps. Four exotic tastes, five delicious fillings, and lots of free toppings. So try one and taste a Canadian tradition. Uh, thank you. No, really, thank you. savings plan you can call any day any time to anywhere with no time restrictions and get great by the minute rates to any country on earth like the united kingdom 36 cents a minute india 89 cents a minute or australia 55 cents a minute where in the world get the most for the least from sprint canada call 1-800-994-MOST today Welcome back. Well, the Cleveland Indians put the Marlins' victory party on hold last night in Miami. Now the World Series is a one-game showdown for the championship. Buck Martinez with the story of Game 6. Well, the Cleveland Indians have been a bounce-back club all year long, and once again in Game 6, they showed what kind of character they had. They went up against the Marlins' tough right-hander, Kevin Brown, and it was Chad O.J., Brown's mound opponent, that was the toughest hitter and a tough opponent on the mound. O.J. got the scoring started tonight with a two-run base hit to right field, and then in his next at bat, he got a leadoff double and eventually came around to score on a Manny Ramirez sacrifice fly. O.J. had two hits, scored two runs, and drove in two runs. A great night for any hitter let alone for an American League pitcher in the World Series. The Marlins just couldn't get anything going against Chad O.J. They had plenty of opportunities, but they couldn't come up with a key hit to break it open. They had a chance in the sixth inning with runners at second and third and two outs, Charles Johnson at the plate. But five-time goal glover Omar Vizquel went to his right, deep in the hole, backhanded the ball, and threw out Johnson at first base to save two runs. That, in my mind, was a defensive play of this World Series so far. Then they turn it over to the bullpen. Mike Jackson, Paul Ossenmacher, and finally the closer, Jose Mesa. Mesa gave up a one-out triple to Devon White, but then got the final two outs of the ball game, and the Indians had forced it to a Game 7 on Sunday. It'll be former Blue Jay Al Leiter against Jared Wright, the young right-hander, Mike Hargrove, announcing that he is going to go with Wright on three days rest, so it'll be Leiter for the Marlins against Jared Wright for the Indians on Sunday in a Game 7 of the 97 World Series. The Indians will not go without a battle. The momentum shifts to Cleveland after a 4-1 win in Game 6. Here's Jim Leland. I thought Cleveland played almost a perfect ball game. In fact, they probably did. Uh, you know, they got some contributions from down there low, like, you know, O.J. getting a big hit, two big hits. But I thought they moved their runner. They got him to third. They got the run, and they hit the sack fly. Um, you know, Vizquel made a great play on C.J. It was, a, it was really a good ball game. And Stephen Brunt in Miami, a pro player stadium this morning, wishing this series had ended last night, or at least until you watched that ball game yesterday, I guess, Steve. Well, you know, John, it's about time we got a, a World Series game that was played like a World Series game. So I, I, I think given that, you know, after the first five games, last night was a relief. Al Mackey and Damian Cox are alongside in studio this morning. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Why is this the least memorable series in recent times? Well, I can start with the two cities. I mean, I don't think, I mean, okay, we can put all the Cleveland jokes away, all right? It, it's, it's old and it's been done, but it's not exactly a uh, mecca for, for baseball interest, I think, across North America. And, and what's Florida? Showing you that, yes, the baseball championship teams can be bought, and Wayne Azinga has the money to do it. So I found no appeal in that. Well, it's been the weather. It's been the weather World Series, right? Too hot in Miami, too cold in, uh, in, in Cleveland. That's what the talk has been about the whole time. I just think now... We've got a clear rooting interest here in Toronto. We want to see Al Leiter get smacked around, but good tonight. <laughs> so it's a perfect setup. How do you see it going into Game 7 tonight, Stephen? Well, it's a, it's a pretty uncertain pitching matchup for a Game 7 in a World Series. You've got a raw kid and Jarrett Wright coming back on three days rest. No one quite knows what he's going to do. He was in high school 
two and a half years ago. And Al Leiter has never been known as Mr. Big Heart. Uh, and so, I, you know, I, <laughs> look, I, I think I think they're going. I think the Marlins go in with some trepidation about Leiter as well. So who, I think we're going to see a lot of pitchers tonight. Let's put it that way. I think they're going to empty the bullpens. Yeah, we've uh, we've seen quite a bit of that already. I guess when you look at what happened last night, you'd have to figure that uh, the momentum has now swung back to the Indians. I don't know, but the thing is that there has been no real momentum in the series. I, you've seen a change within games. You've seen no lead has been safe, and Steve was talking about it. it hasn't been great textbook baseball. Maybe last night the best example of that. But uh, it just hasn't been a World Series that's captured much interest and appeal, and maybe Game 7 can save that. I think when you get to Game 7 of anything, there's something special about it, and I think that might be the thing that saves this series. I just want to know if Don Olmeyer is going to be watching tonight. Well, uh, or did he stop watching after four? After four games. Then that was he's, it. He's right. on the other network, I guess. What has killed us in, uh, in America, Stephen, uh, when you look at the baseball ratings uh, for the World Series? What, why has, has this uh, gone in the toilet? Well, you know, there's a lot of factors there. You know, it's, it's obviously not a great matchup. They're not perceived to be the two best teams, although if you have a playoff setup like this, that's going to happen every once in a while. Um, the baseball was lousy to start. Uh, baseball's ratings in general have been uh, down in the United States. There's more things to watch. And the World Series, I think, is just not like, it's not like the Super Bowl anymore. If the baseball's lousy, people will tune out. They don't watch it by rote the way they once did. Interesting to note that uh, Wayne Zynga will lose uh, something like $34 million on this team this year. That's the latest prediction. He says he'll still own the team if the good citizens of that area of Florida are willing to build him a new stadium. I think this is kind of a nice gesture How the day before Game huh? 7. That, that really surprises me that you go through, you threaten the fans for a while saying, well, I'm going to sell, we'll move, we'll do whatever. And on the other hand, if I could get a new stadium... I might be uh, persuaded to, I mean, that's, that's been coming for a while, from, I think, from Wayne Azenga. I know, but it's like, this has never happened before in sports, right, as you're saying, because you're being real cynical about this, so you've never seen this happen before. Well, the closest was when we thought New Jersey was going to move after yeah. winning the uh, 94, or the 1995 Stanley Cup. But other than that, uh, having a team sold right away is a bit unusual. But Selig says, uh, Stephen, just before we let you go for the moment here, that it's time to take action on uh, fixing the length of these games. Uh, Bud getting headlines down there for that statement? Oh, yeah. Well, he, but he said it before, and it's been said before, you know, and they, they hired Steve Palermo to figure out how to do that. He came up with all kinds of recommendations. Of course, they didn't implement them. The uh, umpires do what they want anyway because they're, uh, they're a little militant these days. So, look, I don't, I don't see how they're going to do it. 3.15 last night, 3 hours and 15 minutes seemed like uh, 2 hours. In, in relative terms in this series. All right, Steve, we'll get back and talk a little hockey with you down there and a little bit more on the Blue Jay ownership as we continue this morning as well. We're pretty happy to have Game 7 on the network tonight. Pre-game show with Rod Smith and Pat Tabler is at 7 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, one way or the other, this baseball season will end tonight on TSN. TSN Sunday, our feature story on Sandra Bezik weaving her magic behind the scenes in world figure skating. And later, those Carolina Hurricanes trying to stir up hockey interest in a brand new NHL market.